very much for keeping it why in the morning. My name is Ram Maguko. If at all you're just joining us, we're just in time for the next conversation of the day. And it's all about HIV testing and counseling, as you can see at the bottom of your screen there. What are the myths and the misconceptions in regards to HIV? Do you remember when HIV came in a play? The stigmatization, the fear, the panic, all that. Do they still exist? Is HIV still a problem? Is it an issue in the society? How far are we in regards to preve the preventive, uh, preventing HIV in the society and even to the point of you know, trying to minimize its effect being felt on the ground? What are the myths and the misconceptions about HIV counselors? Do you feel like you can trust that when you go for counseling, confidentiality is going to be maintained? Well, this morning, we shall talk about this and much more. I'm joined by Albert Mwangi. He is a counseling psychologist at, uh, who serves as a counselor at uh, HIV Test Services. That is HTS. Karibu sana. Asante sana. As, as, thank you for finding time to join me. Salama. Niko Salama. Bana. How do you feel this morning? I feel so good. <laughs> Asante sana. Remember to be part of this conversation. The hashtag as always is why in the morning at Ram Aguko at Y254 channel is where you can find us and uh, at Michelle Ashira and head over to Facebook and drop in your comments there head over to, to Twitter drop in your comments remember we are live also on our website at www.kbc.co.ke for slash y254 let's keep the conversation going Cap, uh, keep texting and keep tweeting and also tell us where you're watching us from tell us have, have you ever been stigmatized in regards to HIV so uh Mwangi, yes uh before we delve deep into the conversation you are from HTS yes uh, which is uh, HIV testing services yeah let's first of all find out what is HTS all about uh HTS means HIV testing services provider is a health worker who has been trained on testing HIV and not only testing HIV but also counseling. Mm -hmm. The reason is HIV when it came to be, uh, it came with a lot of stigma because people were introduced to HIV with a lot of fear. Yes. And they also got a lot of fear going to the hospital. Why? Because HIV uh, was introduced as a curse. It was seen as a death sentence. Yeah, as a curse, mm. death sentence, mm -hmm. and also as something that is brought by sexual immorality. So if you hear someone has HIV, you would only conclude that it is connected to H sexual <laughs> immorality. Which is not the case. It's not the case. So, and this is the reason why the, the NASCOP came up with the idea of having people who are separate from the doctors yeah. and nurses who are called HIV testing services providers, counselors. Yes. So that they become independent. HIV disease has been uh, treated independent from the other diseases because of the stigma, the way it was brought. Yeah. I remember when it came back in the 1980s, it was given a lot of names, nicknames. In the central Kenya, it was called Mokigo. You know, Mokigo is somebody that he has lost his, his, uh, his weight, yeah? uh -huh. muscle, uh -huh. so that the neck becomes tall. Okay. You see how HIV was treated to? Uh -huh. That it's a, it's a it, disease that can never be cured. You get that disease, you are cursed, you are rejected. You know, it's, it's because of the, the way the immune system works in the body yes. back in the day. You, you would, you, would uh, you know, lose Reduce your weight. weight. You will be feel wasted. You get mm -hmm. other diseases. Do you know HIV makes your body to be weak? It destroys your immunity, your immune system. Your immune system is the one that fights. It's the soldiers. Yeah. In your body, it's like when our KDF is no longer existing. You can imagine how the country will be. But now the stigmatization, the, yes. the rate of stigmatization currently yeah. in uh, in twenty twenty one. Uh, on uh, today, is it the same as it was back then? No, currently it's just the same because of these people we are calling the providers, HIV providers. Yes, they are teaching people and trying to tell them HIV is not a, a death sentence. Uh huh. It's a disease. It's a virus that you can live with. It's a virus that you can live with. It's not the way it was brought. Even the adverts that were made 
do, during those 1980s and early 90s uh. they were deadly adverts that is a deadly <laughs> disease but currently we are not having those diseases uh -huh. somebody you could advertise even through the radio you are somebody saying can you abort a vehicle that is going to have an accident knowingly you cannot you cannot so knowing it, that you will get an accident you cannot so they were saying that how can you have sex with somebody then without the the, the preventive measures yes. it was not taught in a way that is friendly to make people understand but they induce the fear but now people. if if even though the stigmatization isn't the same even though the rate isn't um, is similar um, is it still there it is, is stigmatization still, still existing it is still there the stigmatization is still there because the the, the, the these things stigmatize stigmatization mm. is the good response toward uh, shame and disgrace uh -huh. that is brought by doing things that are not relevant or good to the, in the society. Mm. So stigmatization comes from the society. That somebody has acquired HIV. Why? Because he was immoral. You see, that's where the stigma comes in. And that's why confidentiality, when our patients come to us, we attain high levels of confidentiality. Mm -hmm. Because this patient, whenever a patient gets, uh, turns to be positive, what he does, he, he does is to ask the patient, whom would you like to disclose your status to? Now, let's talk about that. Mm. Because, uh, yes, you've said uh, that uh, the rate of stigmatization nowadays is uh, a bit lower, but still there. Yeah. It's still there. Because nowadays, someone is looking, you know, um, healthy. healthy. Yeah. But is HIV positive? Yes. So we need to, to, to dispense of that particular myth. But now, um, cl cl clarify this. What is the importance now of uh, HIV testing and counseling? Yes. Uh, for treatment and prevention of HIV testing, uh -huh. uh, treatment and prevention, yeah. testing is very important. We say that testing is the gate of prevention and curing of HIV. Because yes. you can never cure HIV or treat HIV without knowing that that person is HIV positive. Positive. And my, my cure, uh, you can be healthy for a long time uh -huh. without knowing that you are HIV positive. For and months. You are, and you are spreading the disease. So it is very important to go and be tested uh -huh. so that you help the community. Because when you realize you are positive, you will be given the measures on how to use the drugs, because the drugs, ARVs are there, mm -hmm. that are bringing your viral loads zero to zero. In a sense that it is not, uh, the rate of infection will go down. You will not be able to infect others. When your viral load is low, the rate of infection is also low. Mm -hmm. So when somebody takes drugs, the rate of infection is, is low. So Slow. when testing is very important, so that you know your status, then mm -hmm. you, can, you might be positive, a husband might be positive, and the wife is negative. negative. When they go to the facility, they are advised on how to live together with a positive husband or a, or a positive wife. wife. Because we have this, we have the drugs that are going to prevent uh, infection. But there's one most important thing, that unless you are tested, and the most thing that people fear being tested is because of the stigma. They don't want to know their status because they associate HIV with death sentence. sentence. So it is better to live without knowing than to know and I die. This is not the case. I just want to tell our viewers that this is not the, the, not case. the case. Because some believe that if I go for HIV testing and I'm found to be positive, they will contemplate suicide. Yeah. Some they do that. Some they think of that. Mm. Uh, and in fact, during the testing, there are procedures that we do for all. There is pre-test mm -hmm. counseling mm -hmm. where the package is for the client you assess the client, your uh -huh. patient. Does he know more about HIV? So pre-test is before testing. You test. Yeah. Okay. You carry out your client very well in this counseling. Uh -huh. So how the, do you go through it? The first thing you understand: Does the client understand about HIV? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How does he take HIV to be? Uh -huh. You assess the stigma by asking such questions. You are assessing. Stigma. The stigma. Then you believe. realize, they believe that he has about HIV. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then, hmm. from there, you understand the client 
does the client in any point mm. had and protected his ex? How are you, are you establishing how they might contract yes. Uh, HIV? Yes. Does so you must ask them whether they had uh, yeah. uh, uh, sex. assessing the risk factors that the okay. client had gone through. So if 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 someone uh, is asked that question, mm. it does not mean that they should feel like uh, their privacy has been infringed. You 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 will frame it in a very polite way, mm. in a way that he will not feel that he has been attacked, in a, in an only judgmental way. Uh -huh. you no, know, sometimes you ask somebody in a way, have you ever? You can't do that. You use you you are, that is you, too direct. Yeah, don't use that too direct. <laughs> no, no, no. You get the procedures well. Uh -huh. Get your language well. well, because the moment you don't get your language at the beginning, mm. you don't create a rapport with your client. So the client will block you. And even if you're going to test that client, he will go and beg. Uh -huh. So that is pre-testing. Pre 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 any other thing that you do? You establish uh, uh, the any risk, the risk factors, risk factors. The stigma. Uh -huh. Then there is another thing that nowadays we are introducing. Yeah. We call it APNS. What is that? APNS means uh, assisted partner notification. Assisted partner notification is whereby this client, you try to probe more of his sexual partners, his friends. So that in case this partner, this client is going to be positive, you are going to get the other partners on board through the consent of your client. So he gives you the, the consent, the names. The, the, the yeah, consent. he can give you the names, or the client himself can go and contact his friends and tell the friends how he has found his status, so that they can come to the facility for testing if the if the client turns to be positive. And what what are you saying, friends? Friends. I use the word friends yeah. because you mean we may not be having one partner. One partner. Yeah. Multiple yeah. sexual partners. Yes, you may be having many. By doing this, we are trying to break the cycle of infection. We break the cycle of infection. Uh -huh. You remember sometimes back eh, when somebody was found by a doctor having STI, you wanted to be treated unless you bring your partner. So okay. that the partner on board, you are both treated. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, let, th that is pre-testing. Yeah, they are pre-testing. When, when there is pre, there has to be post. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So what is post-testing? Post-testing, after testing, mm. now, after taking the sample of the, dra uh, of the brad, eh? yeah. you put it for 15 minutes. Uh -huh. For 15 minutes before you get, you get the, the results. Eh? So during this time, post-testing, is now the time you are preparing the client to receive the result. The results. The results. Mm -hmm. Because the result of HIV testing, the client himself should read for himself. Okay. You, 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 you advise uh, or you teach the clients how to interpret the results during the pre-testing. I did not tell you that. You teach how to interpret the results. Mm. Then after getting the results, then you take the, uh, the, the client or the patient to, uh, to read his own results. Mm -hmm. Then he tells you the result. The mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. Then you assess the response of the results. Okay. And, uh, it, yeah, uh, you just by observing the client, mm -hmm. you see the response. Mm -hmm. If the response comes to be positive, you see the response. So this is the whole process of counseling. That yeah, you yeah, you see the response. Mm -hmm. Who does he respond to these results? Mm -hmm. If the result is positive, mm -hmm. obvious, it is very normal for the patient to respond with a lot of shock. Now we've had cases of uh, wrong test results yes. being administered. Yeah. And it has caused a lot of problems in the it past is true. It for is so true. many people. Yeah. People have ma made even bad decisions yeah. after getting wrong results. Yes. How should, uh, you know, what are the measures that uh, are, are, are done or how should we ensure that we have correct test uh, results? Yes. Uh, during the sample correcting, mm. that's where uh, some counselors goes ay you correct the correct sample it is two drops of blood because you have a capillary that that measures the exact amount and the quality you need for yes. the blood mm -hmm. then there is the the buffer that you the determine then after using these uh, uh items you have to wait for 15 minutes before you read the result to read the results. Sometime, uh, some cancer don't eat for 15 minutes to read the results mm. because maybe the queue is wrong. Eh? In a hurry. I want to clear the queue. Mm. In medical field, you don't clear the queue. No. 
give the quality service. service. That's what I can tell my fellow uh, counselors outside there. Mm -hmm. Give the quality service. Even if you are going to test three people for a day and you give the correct results, yes. that's the best. Then giving a lot of people and giving the wrong results. Because we have had cases where somebody has been taking drugs for a long time eh? mm -hmm. and he was negative. Imagine. I, I, I feel, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen such cases and I really have felt for them. Yes. All yes. that money spent, all that time spent, and uh, the stigma, the stigmatization. Yes, that is, uh, and 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 the, the idea that I'm having uh, a terminal disease that will never be cured. And this is uh, an error. Yeah, made by the counselor. Either by counselor there. Now, you've said they should correct the corre uh, they should co they should collect the correct sample. Yeah, and uh, what about? the person who is going to be given that uh, you know uh, to, to be to, to be uh, uh, taking the test should they seek a second opinion once you've acquired uh, yes. results from a particular source uh. from a counselor is it advisable that you get a second opinion from a different counselor absolutely yes and that's what happens suppose it's alba to have tested yes and i have found kamau or Jeroga is positive uh -huh. I give the results, then I'll call the second counselor to come and repeat exact what I have done. Eh? A different test. Yes. And not using my items, the determine and the buffer. Okay. He's going to use his own. Okay. Because okay. I'll come to tell you about that. Eh? So, so. so that he will going to confirm that this thing is true, positive. All right. After also using the determine, there is another confirmatory test that's done using first response. Mm -hmm. Then it is done. Right. First response will uh -huh. tell you this type of HIV is mm. HIV 1 or HIV two. type 2 mm. because it is very responsive. It, it, it gives specific. But the determine is, uh, we, we call it, it is, by, it is reactive. So you... Uh-huh. But so, so the, the different apparatus yeah. for uh, HIV testing. Yeah, they're different. Two different. No, two different. Yeah. Uh -huh. One is to oh. confirm uh -huh. and one is to uh, to specify. All right. Uh because of the interest of time, I, yeah. I want us to, to, to wrap this conversation up. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but before we do, let's talk about uh, the, the, the counselors themselves. Huh? Mm. Because now that you've mentioned that sometimes some counselors want to just hurry things up to just uh, maybe uh, because there is a long queue to ensure that uh, he, he reduces on the time spent delivering services. Maybe they want to just go home. Maybe they just want to head over for lunch or that, or, or that particular uh, uh, you know plan that they had set for themselves. What are the qualities, the qualities of a good counselor that uh, Kenyans should be looking out for? Yes, number one, the good counselor should be one who has confidentiality. Confidentiality is number one. Yes. When you come to the facility, uh, everybody should have confidence in you that whatever you're going to discuss with your client, the result of your client are not going to be disclosed to anyone else without permission of the client. Yes. It's the client who should permit the disclosure of his. Mm -hmm. So a good counselor should not disclose any of those. All right. Number two. Maybe just a few, a few more. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the other thing uh -huh. should be uh, honest. Honesty. The honesty is very important. That all the, pro uh, the algorithm mm. that you are given by the NASCOP to do that work, you should follow it. Mm -hmm. Be honest. Use, let the, the, the test run for 15 minutes as it is stipulated by the law. Okay. Then... Let everything be done according to the procedures. Mm -hmm. We have the procedures that are done. Let's mm -hmm. not do things on hurry. Take your time. Take your time. Then the other thing for a good counselor is to document proper documentation of what you have done. All right. Because that is the one that is going to rescue you after anything. The documentation mm -hmm. of your work. 
should be agreed. Ah, um, because of time, we may not mention all of them, yeah. but I want you to have a final word. Think, talk to Kenyans there yeah. about HIV testing and counseling. What should be our take home? That thing that um, you feel like that youth, that Kenyan who is watching you, ought not to forget. Number one, HIV is not a death sentence. That's number one that Kenyans should understand. Number two, no one should stigmatize you or discriminate you yes, yes, because yes. of your status. Mm -hmm. Let's embrace those people outside there who are HIV positive. And those people who are HIV positive, it's a high time not to keep on hiding because the more you hide, the more you, it hurts you. Be open to people. Let people know that you are HIV positive mm -hmm. and try to educate others so that they come on board so that everybody is going to see that HIV is not a, a, a big deal. It is now with some medication that is making you healthy and uh, helping you move on your life. Mm -hmm. Because many people are now surviving on drugs eh? and they are doing well because of their virus suppression has been brought down. down. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we fear. The fear is the greatest enemy. So let's not fear. Don't fear. Walk in, uh, Walk in uh, that strength. facility that is near you. Mm -hmm. Go there. Thank you. Then the last thing to the youth, and this practical to the youth, mm. let abstain from sexual, uh, from all sexual activities. And if you are going to have sex, have a, sec, uh, a safe sex by using condoms or preventive measures so that you don't have this disease spreading. Mm. Because if you look at our statistics, Currently, the youth are the ones who are reading. They are the <laughs> ones who are at a high peak now with HIV. And we want by 2030 yeah. to have zero infection of HIV. But if we are not going to use uh, protective measures and you are not coming up in numbers to be tested, then we are not going to achieve our targets. We want to have zero infection. The way you have kicked out polio, mm. we are going to kick out HIV. HIV. Wonderful. Yeah. That is Albert Mwangi, counseling psychologist. He serves as a counselor at the uh, HIV test services. That is HTS. Yeah. Bwana Mwangi. Yes. Nashukuru sana. Karibu. Thank you for, for finding time uh, to talk to the youths about HIV testing and counseling. Yes. It is quite informative. And to the youths outside there, remember, prevention is better than cure. Yeah, absolutely. 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 We cannot, youth cannot lead. In, uh, in infecting, it is. Uh, it is not uh, good. It's not good. It's not good. Yeah. I'm not happy with that. I'm sex, happy. sex before marriage to prevent. But remember, there are also many other ways that you can get HIV. Well, that brings us to the end of this conversation on this particular uh, uh, Tuesday morning. But we still have more coming up in a bit. Keep it why in the morning. This is Y254. My name is Ram Maguko. Thank you very much for being part of this conversation.